Come one, come all to the greatest show on earth. Today's spookerific review, we're going to be having a look at the McFarlane Toys Clive Barker's The Infernal Parade. This is Tom Requiem. Just how tall is Tom Requiem? Let's go ahead and take the tape measure and let's put it right to the top of his head, right there. I don't know why I'm whispering, but there we go. Right to the top of his head, not including, of course, the flag. The figure stands at 8.2 inches. In centimeters, you're looking at 20.9. I told you we were going to have a look at another McFarlane movie series or McFarlane series lineup. This is the Clive Barker's Infernal Parade, and this is Tom Requiem. What's neat about each one of these is that they stand atop of, let me just pick him up here for a second so you guys can see, they stand atop of the these like little carts, these wheeled carts in which you would be able to pull them, and you can take the, the hitch from the one in front and attach it to the one behind until you basically have a, yourself a little convoy of the characters that make up the Infernal Parade. I figured we would start with Tom Requiem because I feel like he is like the flag bearer, literally and figuratively, for the Infernal Parade. And then we would have a look at all the other figures and then we would just connect them like a, like a little train, like a little train of horror. Uh, there is some substantial, uh, uh, some substantial assembly required when you put Tom Requiem together, which is, I'm assuming, how it's going to look across the board when we have a look at the entire lineup. On the one side, we've got the King of Showmen, Clovio. And then we spin around on the other side. I'm assuming this might be Clovio here. And then on the other side, we have Tom Requiem, the King of Showmen. Now, these apparently are a pair of performers. As you can see there, that Clovio sits atop of like this little makeshift chair, which so happens also to be the leg of Tom Requiem. That's really clever. I, I like that a lot. Look, before we look at the figures, I have to say that I'm rather, really quite impressed with even just the cart, the wheeled base in which the figure does stand on top of. It does roll. It sounded almost as if you had a little bit of reluctancy to say that. It does roll, but one of the ex uh, assembly points that you have to put together is there's this metal rod that goes right through. Let me just flip it upside down here so you can see it. There's a metal rod that goes through both sides, and then you attach the wheels on either end. The back side I haven't had so much the problem with, and you can see that they do roll. The ones on the front, however, I find I just can't get the wheels completely in place, and I'm worried, of course, putting too much pressure on this, that I'm going to break the spokes on the wheels there. Um, as a result, though, there's a little bit more of a gap. Um, you can try to try your best just to kind of push those in but again being that these are plastic I'm a little worried I will admit I'm a little on the worried side just to put those in but really love the deco treatment that they've added to these and I'm going to assume that all of the carts are relatively similar to one another color wise I guess we'll just have to wait and you guys will have to wait as we have a look at each and every one of them some floor boring boarding added to the top portion which the figure is going to stand atop of and they've also put in the metal brackets there as well. So it's really neat looking, and we haven't even looked at the figure yet, but some really neat work that McFarlane Toys has put into this. Now, being a gap in between what we looked at before, the Six Faces of Fear and the Infernal Parade, in the middle of that, we've got some news, ladies and gentlemen. The news is, of course, that McFarlane Toys is going to be revisiting horror lines, including the movie Maniacs. So you never know. 
this may not be the end of what we're going to be seeing from McFarlane Toys, because really, I think this is when he was in his prime, producing some fantastic pieces like this. And Tom Requiem certainly is no exception. So, okay, let's, we'll look quickly at Clovio. Clovio doesn't require any assembly. He's already attached to the chair when you get him out of packaging. What you do have to add, though, is the little tiny megaphone. And this piece right here, which just so happens to attach right there to this part right here, which happens to be the Clive Barker's Infernal Parade flag. The flag is what I could describe it as best as being. It almost feels like a, it feels like burlap, and then they've just added something to it to stiffen it, if that makes any sense. Like, if you look at it, it does look like it is burlap, like a burlap material, and then they've printed over top of it Clive Barker's Infernal Parade. And if you're curious of what it looks like on the other side, we'll flip it around. Nothing on the other side. That's it. That's all you're going to be getting. The flag was a little on the pain in the butt side to get through because it's, of course, a very thin plastic. So you have to take the flag stem, feed it through Requiem's hand, feed it through enough that it then attaches to the bottom portion, but then Clovio is going to be holding in his hand. So it's a bit of a circus feet all on its own to get the flag fed all the way through and make it look as if it's one consistent, one solid piece. This is a very thin plastic, so be very careful if you do happen to have a brand new one of these and you're getting them out of packaging that you don't break this. This is located on the back clamshell of the figure itself. So there's Clovio. We've already looked at him. Now let's have a look at Tom. Now, Tom Requiem is a rather interesting looking fellow. It almost looks as if he dabbles into perhaps voodoo magic just by just speculation. Now, each one of these figures does also come included with a Clive Barker short fiction piece, which plays into then each one of the individual characters. Now, I simply just didn't bring it out for this review because it's probably going to be an extensive read. You probably could find it online. Um, but it does play probably a little bit more into the background character of Tom Requiem. So in the meantime, what we are going to though look at and focus our efforts on is the figure itself. And I really like the face sculpt on this one. A very sinister looking face on Requiem here. And one thing that is probably noticeable as you look, you span your eyes across the figure, you'll probably see he's got all these chains and attached to each one of, or the half you know within sections of the chain you see these little tiny fingers he's he's adorned himself with other people's fingers obviously not his fingers his fingers are still intact but all the individual fingers is a really exceptional touch that they've added to like i said the little chain work that wraps its way basically he attaches them to himself uh, via these little hooks and then the chains have then these little fingers, these little fingerlings um, attaching their way all across. Really neat. I like that. Uh, sporting on the top, though, is his hat. The hat does feel like it's barely holding on there. Let me just tip it, the figure up so you can see. There is very little holding that in place. I would not think that you can remove this, nor have I really tried to remove this. I don't think you can actually take it off. It's it's only really attached between literally the thumb and the and the pointer finger. I would really love to have taken it off. But the thing is, though, even if I took it off, and then let's say, for example, I put it on top of his head, ultimately then what's going to be looking, what we're going to be looking at, though, is just this vacant hand that is going to be sticking out for no apparent reason whatsoever. I realized quickly that I had dropped the wheel. I just want to show you again the frustration that I have experienced here. This wheel just does not want to stay in place. And we just reattach that to the metal. There we go. Best we can. Maybe we got it a little bit better than we had it before. Um, so like I said, the the wheels, the carts, if you will, do attach via the hitches located on the back. And then those will attach to the front. Now, theoretically, Requiem also does have the means that you could attach something to the front. But again, because I think he is the flag bearer for this line and for the Infernal Parade, I would be more likely and more inclined to display him as the front runner, the one on the front. 
and then have all the carts located behind him. Let's go through his posability because as you would probably guess it, a McFarlane line being an older line, um, unfortunately doesn't have l very little posability to happen in these figures. So the head rotates back and forth. Um, he does technically have a little swivel joint on the shoulder, but there's not really much you're gonna be able to do with it. The last thing you would wanna do is move this and then ultimately pull the chain and rip it away or break the chain in the process. You really do not wanna have that. The hand also does rotate but I just don't get why. I guess if you want to have the hat angled a little bit differently, you can do that, but the elbow just does look a little more bent and awkward that way. So like I said, you can just kind of, and again, the hat is really, really on the loose side. It hasn't come off yet, knock on wood, but it is on the loose side. The This part here also does have, and I'll just compensate here. There we go. Um, I was going to say that the arm here does bend, but the problem you're facing right off the bat, you probably just saw that I almost did it myself. When you move the arm, if you're not careful, you're going to detach what is supposed to be one consistent uh, flag post or flag stem here. And then it's obviously going to look a little disjointed right here. So even though, like I said, with the arm over here, you can move this arm, but why would you? Moving it would just ultimately break what looks like a steady stream of one plastic mold, and then it's going to eventually pop its way off if you're then not too careful. Um, and then he does have leg articulation here, but again, really, what are you going to be doing with this? This is sort of, again, one of those McFarlane pieces that looks really good, and they tease you with putting in posability, but again, you're really not going to be doing much with it. Ultimately, what you're going to be doing with it is exactly what it's doing right now. Yes, it would be safe to say that for the next handful of videos, we're going to be checking out the greatest show on Earth as we have a look at the Clive Barker slash McFarland Toys Infernal Parade. I thought it would be a good starting point, because apparently McFarland Toys thought it was a starting point, to look at Tom Requiem first. He is, of course, the flag bearer, literally and figuratively, for the rest of this lineup. And we've got Clovio sitting down below, announcing each of the characters as they make their way through the square. I like Tom Requiem. He's got some nice coloring, and he's got a neat look to him, kind of like a voodoo magic look to him, and I apologize in advance for not checking out the storyline that comes included with the figures. Maybe what I will do is I'll show the storyline, and if you want to pause the video, but I guess what you could easily do is look online as much easier, I think, to than pausing the video and then trying to read it through the screen. Um, but we will be, of course, having a look at the rest of the Infernal Parade in the next upcoming videos on this year's spectacular spots. Today, once again, we were having a look at the Clive Barker's Infernal Parade, and this was Tom Requiem and little tiny Clovio. If you guys haven't had a chance to hit that little subscribe button down below, what exactly are you waiting for? Like I said, we're going to have a whole bunch of more spectacular videos coming your way. Just because it we're halfway through the month does not mean that the spooky spots have ended. No, they're still coming, and there's a whole bunch coming your way. I know what they are. You guys don't know what they are, but you'll just have to stick around and find out. And don't worry if this isn't your thing and you want to check out some more superhero reviews and other things as well. There's going to be a whole bunch of those intermingled and sprinkled through the month of Spottober as well. So it's never just all spooky spots. As always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do. And I'll see you next time.